for Direction with Pastor Errol Daniel, sponsored by the Streams of Power Ministries in St. Vincent and the Grenadines. Courtships, whatever it is, but the flag bearers, get your flags, please. Oh, God, we just praise you. This is your testimony. It is truly wonderful what the Lord has done. Go ahead, sister. He pardoned. He pardoned my transgressions. He sanctified my soul. He honors my confession. Saved by his blood and hope. It is truly wonderful.
God bless you abundantly. Out loud, shall we? Another time. But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. Is he a liar? Did your Savior ever lie to you? But you and I have told lies, haven't we? Yes. I thought you would say no. One of the things that is certain, God cannot change, God cannot lie, God cannot break any of his promises, and God cannot remember sins that he has forgiven. I'm having a wonderful time with people. Let me see if I could come down here for a little while. We do the fellowship breakfast. Different ones assist me from time to time. Thank you, brother. Last Friday, I was giving out assignment because I say I am not going to do everything for you. So you would go to certain verses and you would read and what a blessing it was. One of the verses from Psalm 103, it was read and one of our sisters, not seen her in the audience today, but she, come, please. I said, our church services, they are different. This is not just people singing and somebody preaching. We have props, we have backups. So it goes a little longer and everything we're doing, it's a message. It brings a message. Brother Woods, go and help her for me, please. It's a message we're giving out. This sister has been around when she was able to walk straight. And anybody who knows her well would tell you she was a chipper on the street. Nobody, no woman could have walked faster than her. But the years are rolling by. And changes take place. But I'm so glad that she's here. She said, Pastor D, I don't want to read today. I don't have enough time. But I want to explain the word child. You remember that? Tell us what you say if you remember. I said, I didn't have enough, a lot of time to, on the breakfast, fellowship breakfast. But I, was, I read some of the verses. And then, when I looked up the word, the verse said, the Lord, he does not always chide, nor keep his anger forever. And the word chide means he does not always scold, or he does not always rebuke. rebuke. And we said that... Um, some people, when you do them something wrong, they are always bringing it up to you and telling you this and telling you did this and you did that. But the Lord is not like that. He says, as far as the east is from the west, so far has he removed our transgression. So when he forgives you, he forgives you and he remembers it no more. And so when others wrong us, we forgive them and we forget it. Um, read the verse. It's verse number nine, but take eight and nine, please. Psalm 103. This is 103, verses eight and nine. Read them out loud. I hope. The Lord is merciful and gracious, slow to anger and plenteous in mercy. He will not always chide, neither will he keep his anger forever. He had not dealt with us after our sins, nor rewarded us according to our iniquities. For as the heaven is high above the earth, so great is his mercy towards them that fear him. 
as far as the east is from the west, so far hath he removed our transgression from us. You know, we could go on and just feast on that. I, I had asked a brother to read the whole psalm for us today. It is truly wonderful what the Lord has done. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Thank you. You never know when you would see them for the last time in the house of God and what you would have seen them doing. Truly wonderful. Put forth that foot again. Let me see. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Um, one day I was in the market and there was a um, man, somebody with a cart, they usually play the song, um, wait, wait on the Lord. We have good courage, one of the song. And I said, like that, it, that is for me, wait on the Lord. But then I waited so long, so many years, I think it's about four years now. And I had to be waiting, waiting, and I want to say, Lord, so long, I have to wait so long, so long is waiting, but thank God before, when I didn't really expect it. The Lord did something. We've been waiting over 2,000 years now for the trumpet of God. Hello to some. Over 2,000 years we've been waiting. Let us not become weary in waiting. He will come. I said he will come. Peter says, one day with the Lord, thank you, brother, is as a thousand years. And a thousand years as one day. And then here, brother Peter, he said, the Lord is not slack concerning his promise. Not promises now, promise, because he was talking about the promise of his second coming. So he said, the Lord is not slack concerning his promise, but he is long-suffering. Thank God for being long-suffering. Not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. All. All. Every member in every constituency, every person living in St. Vincent and the Grenadines and all over the world, look at a long-suffering God giving people a chance to get right. That's all. He could have been here a long time ago. But he's saying, sinner, come. Come back, slider. Return. Return. Jesus, we thank you. When our sister was finished, Given that explanation, but I didn't take time to give. A lady who is blind called in and said, I want to thank Sister Tony for giving that explanation because she said, over 40 years, I made a mistake. I repented and God has forgiven me. But people still dashing it in my face. And it's difficult to live with that. But today having heard. But as far. As far. As the east is from the west. So far. Hath removed our transgressions from us. And she quoted a scripture. That I did not bear in mind that what is written in Hebrews, can't remember Hebrews what, but it speaks about God, you know, will just wipe out the slate. But I remember Isaiah 45, 
verses 22 and 3. Would you like to turn to Isaiah chapter 45? Then I got a, a note. I got a note from many, many miles away from one of our children who will participate but said it was so dark and she was already on her way to work so she could not do what I was asking to be done. But like she had a change of mind and pull aside, get the words. That is not what I want, you know. That's not what I want. Have I missed the scripture? But it says, God has blotted them out. Isaiah 44, 22 and 3. Isaiah 45, verses 22 and 44, verses 22 and 3. Thank you for helping, but take time with me. Thank you very much. That was a favorite verse or chorus in Pentecostal churches a couple of years ago. Actions were put to it. Teachers who wanted the children to get the truth of God's word. They sang it. And so, I asked Dari to play it. We were about to close. When um, the voice note came in with the song. I don't know if I could try that or if you know it, but the scripture, let's read the scripture before we try it, if we will try at all. So it's Isaiah 44, verses 22 and 23. Okay, but step by step, 22 is up, 23 will come just now. Out loud, must read out loud, everybody. I Let's see if we could sing it now. Is there a Sunday school teacher who knows it or just a member in this church? It begins with, God has blotted them out. I'm happy and glad and free. God has blotted them out. Just turn to Isaiah and see. Chapter 44, 22 and 3, he's blotted them out, and now I can shout, for that means me. Thank you for helping, we're going to do it another time. You know, we use different things to erase things these days. And even when you delete something, I understand it is not really deleted. Those who know how to go and get it back, they could get it back. But you see, when God deletes your sins, when God blot out your transgressions, even though people go looking for them, they are as far as the east is from the west. Now you have to understand what I am saying. What the scripture is saying. You are not practicing sin on a daily basis. And claim the blotting out. Because the scripture asks among many questions. Shall we continue in sin? That grace may abound that is in Romans chapter 6. Question. Not the answers yet. 
Stick with me. Question is, shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? Now the answer or the response is, God forbid. Another question, how shall we that are dead to sin live any longer therein? You might have sinned. But if you feel comfortable living in sin, you need to be born again. If you feel comfortable living in sin, you really need to be born again. If we say, 1 John 1, I think it's 9, if we say that we have not sinned, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. But. <laughs> Let me say it again. If we say that we have not sinned. We make God a liar. And the truth. Is not in us. But if we confess our sins. He's faithful and just to forgive us and to cleanse us from all sin. Where are we going with this? Help me, Holy Spirit. This is for me. This is for you. This is for others who are having a struggle today like this sister. Um, I, you know, testimonies are important. She said, I've gotten the answer right out of the word of God. I now know how to deal with it. As far as the east is from the west. She said, I'm not living this way or that way. No. It's something I did over 40 years ago. God bless you, sister, for confessing and forsaking. You have the mercy of God. Proverbs 28, 13. He that covereth his sin shall not prosper. But whoso confesseth and forsaketh them shall have mercy. I repeat Proverbs 28, 13. He that covereth his sins shall not prosper. But whoso confesseth and forsaketh them shall have mercy. We can have a bright future when we put into God's hand our past. For if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. You know, I didn't get a lot of chance to go and have a fling in the world. And thank God, I didn't take whatever opportunity was there. But a lot of people have done some very terrible things. But God has forgiven them. And who are you? To tell God you should not have forgiven. Are you going to be a, a prodigal stay at home? Or are you going to thank God that a sinner has come home? That a man, a woman has amended their ways. Paul was speaking about immoral behavior even to homosexuality and lesbianism and he says such were some of you but the word but you are washed now you are sanctified now you are justified and God has a lot more to clean up I was still you know, thinking and praying, God, I don't know what to tell the people except you tell me what to tell them. 
and uh, reference came in my spirit concerning, I'm going to get that note. Concerning two women. Two women. One of them, her name was Rahab. Her practice was harlotry. Those are not names or titles or designation. These days, you, you could live how you want to live. And some people have nice titles for how you live. Very nice titles. But the word of God is clear. It is plain. The Bible speaks about a harlot. I think they call them these days sex workers. So they're working for what they give, for what they get. And then they could feel comfortable. Bow as you go, please. The camera is on you. Rahab, the harlot, could have died, I wrote. Like Jezebel the terrorist and murderer. But she, Rahab, chose to believe the men of God for her salvation and that of her family. She could have died as a harlot. But she believed that God had sent the spies. She said, we have heard about the power of your God. And I'm going to protect you. I'm going to hide you. But promise me. But when you come to destroy this place. I'll not be destroyed. Some people do things out of need. But when you see the opportunity. To get out of what you're doing. Because it is wrong. Get out. When you come to church and you hear the word of God with a brother or sister talk to you to help you to get out, get out in Jesus' name. Not only get up, but get out. Escape for your life. Oh, Rahab was saved. And if you read what a blessing she became later. How through what she did... By acknowledging God and hiding the servants of God. That she plays a part in the Savior's coming. And our salvation. But there's another woman. What is the name of that woman? Jezebel. She was a terrorist. Give me a chance. If you don't know how to get this thing from Nabal, I'll get it. Examine your attitude in getting things. Examine what you do to get what you want. And so she stood in the place... Of her husband. And she should not have. And she got. Naban's vineyard. But not. Without the notice of God. Do we believe that God is looking at what is happening. In the world today. Do we believe that God has given up control of the world. I hope we have not. We do not believe that. And so the prophet was spoken to by God. Let us allow God to speak. 
Some of you in, um, indefinitely speak about preachers. Some preach too long, you say. Some preach too short, you say. And if preachers set out to preach to please people, they may not say a single thing. In the book of Jeremiah, one of the things they said to get him to stop, they said, let us smite him with words. Let's say bad things about him. That would discourage him. And to a certain extent, he was discouraged. But God did not leave him. He remembered the word of God. Somebody help me preach. He said the word of God was like a hammer and a fire. Fire especially shot up in my bones. And I was tired keeping quiet. So I had to speak. The prophet, the man of God, said to Jezebel, God is going to be dealing with you shortly. And every part of your body will be eaten by dogs. I really, I have not seen dogs eating dead people. But the prophet said, every part of you would be eaten by dogs, except your skull and your hands and your feet. Dogs would refuse to eat your mind. Your mind is too bad. Too bad-minded. Too much iniquity in your mind. And even dogs would refuse to eat your mind. Your hands shed innocent blood. So the dogs will not touch your hands. And your feet. Have gone out of the way of God she didn't believe that that would have happened but if God says something will happen it will happen so one day she was up in the loft and when she didn't know somebody was going to fling her over you know sometimes when you think it's good company around you some of them say just waiting for a chance to throw you down They would laugh with you. They will talk with you. But some people, I see, they're looking for an opportunity just to push you over. And indeed, she was pushed over. And there was nothing or no one to stop her. And the dogs were there to lick up her blood and to eat the different parts of her body. All scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable. These are written for our learning and admonition. So we will not go the way of those who transgress against God. I'm trying to finish. You know, David could have died as an an unrepentant adulterer and murderer. He could have died that way. And especially he was king. Who could tell the king anything? But again God spoke to one of his prophets. And he said to his prophet. I'm sending you to David. I'm not sending you to spread him out in public, but I want you to go to him in private. Some of us like to spread out in public. You don't know the Bible says he that covereth a multitude. Let me see. 
I'm not getting it right. No, no, no. That's not it. It speaks about hiding a multitude of sins. That is, if you try to help your brother or your sister to get right, then you're preventing them. It's, it's in James, a multitude of sins. But don't worry. Don't worry. It's in the Bible. Um, it is there. He let him, well, you need to get the verse before. You need to get the verse before. We can't start from let him. I'm waiting on you. Try your best. Verse 19. Start at verse 19. You have your book. You see, that is what is happening sometimes with those things. They stick and so on. It, it is um, James 5 from verse 19. Okay, thank you for helping. Brethren... My brother, my sister, my brother, my sister. That is what brethren means. It's not a religion. My brother, my sister, brethren, if any of you do err from the truth and one convert him, let him know that he which converteth the sinner from the error of his way shall save, shift a little cameraman, shift a little, thank you, shall save a soul from death and shall hide a multitude of sins. Do you have time to get this? So, Prophet Nathan went to David, said I have something to tell you. And he told him the story about the man who had a lot of sheep. And another man who had one sheep. The man who had a lot of sheep. Sent for the man who had one sheep. And um, he killed it. Now that's injustice. Do you think that God hates injustice? All you answer, no man. Do you think that God hates injustice? Yes. Do you believe that God is a just God? Yes. Don't go quiet or cold on me. I'll wake you up. And question again. Do you believe that God hates injustice? Yes, yes he does. He's a just God. He's a merciful God, but he hates injustice. That is why the Bible says he shall give every man according to his work. So, after David heard, thank you, sister. After David heard, what was done? He said, judgment for the man. Judgment. That man should be killed. And the man of God lifted up his eyes. And he looked at him straight in his eyes. Because by this time the king was angry. While the prophet was waiting for response. When he heard this man should be killed. He lifted up his eyes. And he said, you are the man. You think his one wife David had? Do you think he had access to more? But his soul there had just one. That was the little lamb. That was the little kid. That David sent for. One of the things the Bible tells me, tells us, is that we have to beware of covetousness. For a man's life consisteth not in the abundance of things that he possesseth. You can have all the world and its money. 
You cannot have all the, build all the castle tall enough to reach the sky. But you know nothing until you know the love of God. We're not in this thing for joke. It is home stretch. Yes, we have sinned, but he has granted us mercy and pardon. But we must not continue sinning against God. Keep back, O oh God, your servants from presumptuous sins and let them not have dominion over me. Let the words of my mouth, so help me God, and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O oh Lord, my strength and my redeemer. There is not one single person in this building who has never sinned. It might not have been the sin of David. But we're guilty before God. Question is asked, God, if you should mark iniquity, who will stand? Who? But we must come to the place where we know, having confessed our sins and forsake them, that we have the mercy of God. And with confidence. You could face all those who are condemning you. For the past. And say my future. Is in God's hand. Yeah, yeah. God is wonderful. David could have died like another king. By the name of Saul. Because Saul was disobedient and decided that he would offer sacrifice. And believe that sacrifice would please God. But Samuel, his instructor, and who inaugurated him into office said, God has no pleasure in sacrifice like in obedience. Behold to obey is better than sacrifice. Maybe about five more minutes. Can you bear with me for about five more minutes to bring you the message? <laughs> he was now on his own. That is... That is, Saul, Samuel looked at him walking away from his presence. And guess where he went to? To look for Obey woman. Let me tell you something. If God would not help you, nobody would be able to help you. If God would not help you, there's nobody who would be able to help you. I could see him going looking for an Obi woman. And when he found her, lots of things took place, you know. But when he found her, he said, I want you to walk for me. But as she began to walk, she realized that this was not an ordinary man. But he assured her to go ahead and do her work. I long to see Samuel. Some of us would long to see our mothers again. And our fathers. And our pastors. And our brothers. And our sisters. People who stood around us to correct us. But we didn't want to hear them. There's a prayer. If I could only hear my mother's prayer again. Mammy told me I should not have done this. Mammy told me I should not have done the other. Mammy said, stay away from bad company. They will not help you. They will hinder you from becoming somebody in life. But Mammy is dead and gone. You could go to the graveyard. Mommy's body is rotten. 
you might not even find bones because she died so long. Mommy's dead bones cannot help you. Daddy's dead bones cannot help you. You have no right in the graveyard looking for bones. Right where you are, right now you can call upon God. Oh God, I have sinned against you. God, have mercy upon me. God, cleanse me. God, transform me. You're going to, in these modern times, say, send, send, send heavenly beings to my brother's uh, to warn them, lest they come where I am in this place of torment. Who do you want to come and from where to warn you? When the world, according to Romans, Romans 10, the world is naive. Even in thy mouth, the word of truth that we preach, that if, come quickly, if thou shalt confess, with thy mouth, the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thine heart that God has raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. May in our nation, may we get our hearts clean up. We're cleaning up now because of the dengue that we're aware of, of in our country. The corona. Boy, we're washing for so, we're sanitizing for so. And that is in place. But you can wash your hands and san san sanitize everything. You still die one day and you stand before God. And the funny thing, if you stand before God... With hands that are not clean. And hearts that are not pure. You wouldn't stand a chance. To enter the kingdom of God. We've got to clean up. Physically. As well as spiritually. We mess up the country. By dumping garbage. We're told all over the place. We have some people who have no respect for decency. Whenever you go and don't come back, stay quite long to the back, please. Listen, I had a brand new vehicle a couple of years ago. First one I ever had. I was driving into town not to show myself. But there were some guys who wanted a show. They were spring drinking their beers. Not that I knew them. But the vehicle was in front of me. And when one was finished drinking his beer, he just threw the bottle out. And you know what that did to my vehicle? It broke the windscreen. I had to chase them right to Kingston and report to the police that the number of that vehicle, such and such, somebody just threw a beer bottle out of it. Well, it was admitted that that was done. Not to spite me, really, but... We have all kind of indecent people. They're begging. The health officials are asking not to, not to, not to. Let's have a, they coin it, a shared responsibility. But people do what they want. Some people, that is, some. I have to stop. But instead of Saul cleaning up his life, he went to dirt it up further. I hope a man can clean your life, you hear? It's dirt coming on your life. When you submit yourself to an obey man or obey a woman for all those simi dimmies, he, she might say they bathe in you. What they bathe in you with? <laughs> I'm making drug, you know. I'm telling you what the word of God says. He could have, like David, repented. 
but he didn't do it. He ended up taking his own life. This is what David has left behind. It was sung already. Creating me. A clean heart. Oh God. God I dirty my life. And I hate dirt. I don't want to live this way. Creating me a clean heart. Oh God. And renew a right spirit. Within me. Cast me away. From thy presence, O oh Lord, and take not thy Holy Spirit from me. I wish I could go further. But we have other things to do. Again, we want to f follow what was put in my spirit. You say, well, I didn't hear that. You don't have to hear that. But in my spirit, let there be a team of people who will pray before the service. But there must also be people who will be praying as a part of the service, as well as worshipers. If you look at your time, we could have been through already, but we took time out. To just show to you today. That there are those who have been impacted upon. For good. I heard a, a sister last night. I don't know what congregation she belongs to. But she was on sweet hour of prayer. And that woman rarely. Interceded. In different ways for this country. God bless her. God is looking for intercessors. Yes, he is. Whoever that lady was, if she's listening, God bless you. Keep on making intercession. Heavenly Father, pray with me, please. We thank you for the moments we have spent in your presence. Thank you, Lord, that we benefit by spending time with you. We don't spend enough. Help us to spend more. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, you search our hearts and you know our condition today. Cleanse us. Renew us, O oh God. Restore us. And use us to your honor and to your glory. In Jesus name. I. I wanted to title this message. For those who are recording. The battle for the souls of men. I didn't get to do all of it. But the battle for the souls of men. And if I had more time, I would have told you that this battle is raging and there's some S's. One, the battle against sin. Two, the battle against... Sorry. Sickness. The battle against sin. Don't think that everybody... Has repented. Don't think that everybody is well. There's a battle right now. Maybe some people are in the intensive care. Our medical department is saying that they had to add, if I heard well, more beds. The medical department Is saying that they have to hire more helpers. So we have a battle that is being fought. And finally, the battle against Satan. I give you the outline so when I come back, three S's. But we have the victory because the Lord 
is for us. So help in the ministry, Heavenly Father, of health. The answer is not with the minister, and there are those who think so. Give him the courage, give him the wherewithal to say and to do. So that more sick people be made well, but we can't leave the healing of the nation just to the medical people. You have said in your word that your disciples have the authority to lay hands on the sick for their recovery. And you have said to us concerning Satan that he's not a lion, but he goes about pretending that he's a lion. We're all lion of the tribe of Judah. Break every chain. Give us the victory again again over sin sickness and satan we are out of time we have to stop there for today but i trust that the word of god will have free course in your hearts if we can be a further help to you please get in touch with us and let us know you can write to us at direction PO box 443 st vincent west indies you can also call us at 784 456 1636 or visit us online at streamsofpower.com. We look forward to hearing from you. So until next time, may God bless you richly.